Hi everyone, I am Neil Trevitt. I work on developer ecosystems at NVIDIA and I am president of the Kronos Group. Today, I'm going to give you the latest updates on Kronos's OpenXR open standard for portable, augmented and virtual reality and how it is enabling portable cloud XR devices and applications using 5G. It's a great time to be talking about OpenXR. It's being widely adopted throughout the industry. And if your company is developing AR, VR, or cloud XR systems and software, we hope that it will help your business too. If you haven't come across Kronos before, we are an open consensus-based standards consortium providing a safe place for the industry to cooperate and create interoperability standards that enable applications to access the power of 3D graphics, virtual and augmented reality, and parallel computation. Kronos is a non-profit organization, and all the standards we create are open and royalty-free for the industry to use. We have been developing open standards for over 20 years and have about 160 members, and that includes everyone from the largest companies to small startups. Here are some of the Kronos standards that are most relevant to augmented and virtual reality. We have 3D APIs, including Vulkan and WebGL for rendering both natively and in the web, 3D asset formats, including GLTF and the new 3D Commerce Working Group that is ramping up the use of 3D for e-commerce to industrial scale. We have APIs and languages for parallel computation, including vision processing and inferencing. And last but not least, we have the OpenXR API standard for portable access to augmented and virtual reality devices and runtimes. So let's focus in on OpenXR in more detail. At Kronos, we say OpenXR to include both augmented reality and virtual reality. OpenXR defines a common API that all XR runtimes can expose to application and engine developers, enabling XR software to be written once and run on any OpenXR conformant hardware. OpenXR enables device vendors to continue to innovate in the design and implementation of their hardware and runtimes, but the industry has now agreed how to consistently expose the capabilities of those XR devices to software developers to enable XR software portability. OpenXR is supported by almost all the leading companies involved in building AR and VR systems throughout the industry. It is interesting that as well as providing portability, OpenXR has enabled the industry to come together to share learnings from first generation XR APIs and to collaborate to create a new generation API with cutting edge capabilities and a flexible, extensible, future-proof architecture. And the hot of the press news is that OpenXR is rapidly gaining widespread adoption with conformant implementations now including all Windows mixed reality headsets and HoloLens 2 from Microsoft, the Rift S, Quest and Quest 2 from Oculus, the Vive Cosmos from HTC, the open source Monado OpenXR implementation from Calabra, and most recently, the entire range of Vario high resolution VR headsets. Valve have publicly stated that all new Steam VR functionality will be exposed in OpenXR rather than in their older proprietary OpenVR API. And Facebook has recommended that all game engines and applications use OpenXR rather than its proprietary API. Both Unreal and Unity engines now have OpenXR support, and the WebXR engine in Chromium that's used to bring XR capabilities to the Chrome and Edge browsers, now uses OpenXR as its default backend. And enabling WebXR is important as the metaverse will very likely include openly connected and searchable virtual spaces and interstitial experiences, which will evolve as part of the World Wide Web. And so it's critical that the industry bring effective XR capabilities to the browser. The WebXR standard is being developed by the World Wide Web Consortium, and Kronos is working closely with the WebXR working group at the W3C, so that WebXR can effectively use OpenXR as a native portability API, 
saving WebXR from having to be ported to dozens of proprietary runtimes. Yet Kronos is fulfilling its role in the industry by providing native access to XR hardware, as well as 3D rendering for both native and web applications through Vulkan and WebGL. Additional high-profile applications that are using OpenXR include Microsoft's Render Dragon rendering engine to provide VR support in Minecraft across all OpenXR devices. The popular Blender open source 3D authoring application has support for OpenXR since June 2020 to enable real-time interactive VR scene inspection. And in the world of flight simulators, Microsoft Flight Simulator uses OpenXR exclusively for VR functionality, and War Thunder recently upgraded its VR functionality to OpenXR in June 2021. Alongside the OpenXR 1.0 specification, the Kronos OpenXR conformance test suite is in open source and is free for anyone developing an OpenXR implementation. The Kronos OpenXR Adopters Program enables OpenXR implementations to become officially conformant by submitting conformance test results for working group review. Conformant implementations can use the OpenXR logo and trademark and are protected by the Kronos IP framework. And for developers, this OpenXR Adopters Program ensures consistent implementation quality and application portability across the multiple OpenXR implementations as they roll out from multiple vendors across the industry. One of the interesting things about this first wave of conformant OpenXR devices is that it includes several different form factors, including PC tethered and standalone devices, both AR and VR devices, and runtimes over both Windows and Android demonstrating that the OpenXR architecture is fully capable of supporting a wide variety of devices and platforms. And as with all Kronos standards, OpenXR is extensible, and there are already cross-vendor hand and eye tracking extensions for building advanced user interfaces. The hand tracking extension defines a consistent hand articulation model that is shipping on the HoloLens 2, and UltraLeap has a developer preview. The eye tracking extension has been developed by sensor vendors, including Toby, and will enable natural eye gaze interactions. And this extension is also shipping on HoloLens 2. Looking forward, the OpenXR working group is now defining cross-vendor extensions for accessing spatial information about the user's real-world surroundings to enable ever-richer portable AR experiences and expanding haptics and body tracking support. So what functionality does OpenXR provide? Well, OpenXR contains everything an application needs to drive XR devices in a system. This includes device discovery, event processing, sensor tracking and pose calculations on the input side, and frame display timing and composition, plus haptics control on the output side. However, OpenXR deliberately doesn't include any 3D rendering functionality, and so an OpenXR application will use a rendering API, such as Vulkan, to generate imagery. OpenXR can be used with any 3D API, but a new generation API such as Vulkan provides the high performance and low latency that are vital for a compelling XR experience. Um, whatever 3D API is being used, OpenXR provides all the, the display parameters necessary for the application to be written to run portably on any OpenXR compliant device. So finally, what about CloudXR? As well as providing application portability between different HMD devices, OpenXR can provide portability as augmented reality is deployed on new architectures such as CloudXR platforms. CloudXR can use 5G to enable a lightweight AR device to send its real-time sensor data to an edge server that processes that sensor data and uses powerful GPUs to generate graphical augmentations that are much more sophisticated than could be generated on a battery powered device and which are sent back to the device for display. An OpenXR runtime 
can be implemented to run across both the AR device and the server, with the OpenXR API completely hiding the 5G round trips from the application. This enables the same applications to run natively on an AR device or a cloud XR device connected to an edge server. And in this way, OpenXR can enable and accelerate the widespread deployment of portable cloud XR based AR systems and applications. So that was a very quick introduction to Kronos and OpenXR. Uh, OpenXR is gaining wide industry adoption because it's a win-win for all involved. Software developers can write an application once and deploy on multiple hardware platforms without reporting, including to cloud XR systems, saving time and money and reaching a much larger market. XR hardware vendors win when they expose the OpenXR API on their platform by accessing a large library of OpenXR compatible applications. But most importantly, end users win as they will know that XR applications that they want to run will be compatible with the system that they have purchased, growing customer confidence and growing the XR market for everybody. Kronos is playing a vital role in the industry by providing a safe space for any interested companies to cooperate on the creation of open standards that benefit their own business and the wider industry. If your own company would like a voice and a vote in the development of OpenXR, you are welcome to join as a Kronos member. Or if you prefer, you can simply implement OpenXR on your own hardware. You don't have to join Kronos, there are no royalties, and you can become an adopter to use the trademark and gain the protection of the Kronos IP framework if your implementation is officially conformant. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.